You can do so much for this ummah, Allahu Akbar. The, the Muslim ummah throughout the ages have done so much, you know. You can do so much to benefit and give back. But sadly, what it is, we just get into this whole dekha dekhi, this thing, you get me, that I want to seem to be the rude boy of the, of the area. And we call zulm to one another, man. Like, someone's ready to really hurt his own Muslim brother because he's stepping on my turf, he's selling mal on my turf. So what, I'll stab another Muslim. How much are you going to make, realistically? Like, I'm, like I said, I'm not here to tell you stories. Right? I'm not here for entertainment. I'm going to say re- reality of what we see and what we hear. A Muslim is ready to attack another Muslim. Okay, let's just say you pick up, you know, I don't know if you guys are aware of the term chabis, right? You, you know what a chabi is? Yeah, key. Chabi is a key, right? These are the, t- the, the istilahat of our hazrat. When you get a chabi, you get a kilo. La hawla wa quwwata illa billah. Curry and rice is the new trend. If you're picking up crack and heroin, it's curry and rice, at Liyazu Billah. You see, these are the funny things our youngsters come up with. So let's just say someone knows Billah does that. You can break that one K up and cut it up and put your talcum powder in there and your teething powder and cut it to two. You're going to potentially give that to 2,000 crackheads. Every person that tokes on your thing and does a line of your mal, you are going to be accountable on the day of judgment. How much can you make off a key? I'm not going to start putting statistics in your brain, no, Allah, because shaitan will trick us and say, fam, get off your dough money and do that. <laughs> Allah forbid, because we're so weak. But the reality is, until how long is that money going to last you? Two months, five months, a year? There's no barakah in that. So you're going to squander it. Because you're going to say, pick up another one. And now jabi becomes jabiyah, which is plural for keys. And then eventually it's going to come to an end. And then what? All that guna you've done is still on your head. What well, you think Allah's gonna just wipe it off? Okay, Jalo, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Slap one cheek, turn the other one, it's okay. No, 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 Al Din doesn't work like that. You do zulm on someone today, you are answering for that on the day of Qiyamah. You can't run away from that. And this is why the Prophet وسلم, he actually asked the Sahaba, Do you know what a poor person is? Who's a poor person? If I ask one of the brothers here, Who's poor? What are you gonna say? Define a poor well, Who's a poor person? Define it. I'm actually asking the question, What answer are you gonna give? Anyone? Who would, who would you, what is a poor person? Someone who doesn't have what? Money. money, there you go. That's what a poor person, that's what our understanding of money is, right? Uh, of poverty. That's exactly what Sahaba thought. Generally, if you pick up the hadith, you'll find that anytime they were questioned, they would always say, <coughs> Allah wa Rasuluhu A'lam. Allah wa Rasuluhu A'lam. Allah wa Rasuluhu A'lam. Allah and his Rasul know best. We don't know anything. But the question seems so straight, straightforward that you're asking who's a poor man, and it just seems someone who doesn't have money. So they answered the question. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned Al-Muflis min ummati man yati yawm al-qiyamah bi salatim wa zakah Siyam wa zakah wa qad shatama hadha Wa qadafa hadha wa akala maala hadha Wa safakata ma hadha wa daraba hadha Fa yu'ta hadha min hasanatihi Wa hadha min hasanatihi Wa hadha min hasanatihi Fa in faniyat hasanatuhu Qabla an yuqdama alihi Ukhidha min khatayahum Faturihat alihi Thumma turiha fin nar He mentioned you know a poor person really is It's not a person that can't afford to buy a house in Huddersfield it's not a person that can't afford to buy that whip that you can see on the main road on Huddersfield Road or Halifax Road. It's not that person that doesn't own the nearest fishery or the nearest kebab shop or the person that doesn't ride around with that girl with the fake Rolex on her hand. It's that individual that will come on the day of Qiyamah with amal, with good deeds. First of all, we don't even pray in the first place. What deeds we got? What have we got that we can present in front of Allah? Let's just say my rule gets taken out right now. Where am I standing in front of Allah on the day of Qiyamah? With what and what? What have you got? What are you going to present to Allah? What, your fake Rolex that you picked up from Raja Bazaar when you was in Pakistan for your holiday? What, your eBay sh- stuff from China? What are you going to show Allah? What, your shades? What are you going to show Allah subhanahu on the day of what? What have you got, my brother? Tell me, what? Realistically. Well, the only thing that's going to work there, my brother, is good deeds. What have you got? Show me, in it. And then we don't even have any good deeds. But here the Prophet said, this person will come with salah, siyam, zakah, all manners of deeds. Fasting, praying, charity, the lot. He would have loads of deeds. But what he would have done, he would have done zulm in his life. He would have cursed somebody. He would have accused someone of something. He would have hit someone. He would have caused a bit of taklif to someone. What? And this individual, one by one, they'll be called forth on the day of Qiyamah. Allah will say, hold on a second, you may have got away with it in the dunya, but you're not getting away with it here. According to the zulm someone does, the a'mal will be given to that individual. How many, you made someone's son a crackhead? What, you think the mum's going to just make dua? Yalla, it's okay, it's okay. My, my son had so much potential, but next man sold him mal on road and he's a crackhead. But it's all right. It's all right. You think she's that much of a muppet? She's going to forgive you for that. She ain't going to forgive you for nothing, my brother. You made her son a brownhead. You made her son a crackhead. Well, you think she's going to let it go? Then you're living in cuckoo land, mate. 
You need to go and put your head in the ground like some ostrich because no one's forgiving you for nothing. You made their, you, you turned their mother into their daughter into a, into a prostitute to feed her heroin habit. She was selling her baby's nappies to pump her vein with heroin. Well, you think the baby's going to forgive you? Well, you think the mom's going to forgive you? And who's selling the mal? Hazrat Abdullah in the area. Hazrat Muhammad and Abdul Qudus and Abdul Rahman and Abdul Razak. These are issues in our community, but we don't talk about them. Why? Because we don't offend anybody. Well, I don't give a monkey's if I offend anyone. Don't call me then, innit? I'm not here for that. We're here to speak the haq. If people like it, fine. You don't, then I'll do one. It's all right. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to speak what's true. Well, these are the discussions that we don't have in our communities. These are the discussions we're not talking about. Why? Because I don't want to offend Khan Saab and Malik Saab and Bar Saab and Patel Saab and Flana Saab. I don't give a monkey who I offend. It's our haq to speak the truth. And if you've got a problem, it's your problem, not mine. Because if we are, as ulama are not going to speak the truth, then who's going to speak the truth? What, you're going to hear this on what, someone, a newspaper and you're going to make, take heed from it? This is the problem. We need to wake up to reality that we are causing our own destruction in, in our country. Our, this is my, I don't know about you, where you man are from. I'm from here. And this is why I feel sympathetic towards my people, as in English people as well. They're our people, man. They're our... What, so we... Okay, I'm, well, my whole bayan is be good to Muslims, but screw the rest over. Well, is that what I'm trying to say? I'm not saying that. We should treat everyone with respect and courtesy.